Hello and welcome to the Liverpool Connection podcast. I'm your host, Dazza. I've uh, got my co-host, Steve, with me. And our special guest today from Goal.com is Neil Jones. Good morning. Oh, yeah, it's still morning over there. Just about, just about, yeah. 11.30, yeah, so early enough. Yeah. Um, my first question um, has got to be, any, any news on Robbo? No. Um, no, I mean, it's, as I say, it's 11.30 when we're talking here, so it's um, still to be updated on the news. He was undergoing a scan today up at Kirby, or, well, on Merseyside, and then we're waiting on that. It um, doesn't look... It doesn't look great for the Norwich game, does it? I think I think that's the first thing to say. I think we have to say he's very much a serious doubt for the Norwich game. I think the question probably is later on whether it's weeks or or, or months um, on the injury. He posted yesterday, I think he said that he was quite positive or hopeful. Um, mm-hmm. He sounded quite positive. I think Jürgen Klopp said the pain has settled, which is, I imagine that's a good sign, as is the fact that the physio allowed him to walk down the tunnel with an ankle injury, which I wouldn't have said would be advisable if it was a a break or a, a ligament tear or something like that. So fingers crossed on that, but no, no update yet. Um, and I think everyone will be watching tonight whenever Costa Simakas runs with the ball or goes in for a challenge and just wincing and thinking, oh, please don't. But yeah, hopefully, hopefully not too bad, but we'll wait and see on that one. That's all right. We got, yeah. we got Owen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Hey, hey, Neil, good morning. I wanted to uh, just say hi and, uh, you know, refresh everybody's rem- memory from last summer. You know, we had Simicus and he was injured and I think he even had COVID and he yeah. never really got settled. And and then we just see, uh, you know, Robbo playing almost every minute of every game last year. So hopefully this season going into it with Robbo being injured and Simicus having a proper preseason, you know, uh, he, he'll be ready to uh, fill in. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, he's, he's played, I think it's about six minutes of Premier League football so far for Liverpool. He played a couple of games in the Cups. Um didn't have a great game. I think it was Atalanta at home, wasn't it, in the, in the Champions League? And he, he, I mean, Liverpool didn't play well particularly, but he he didn't didn't stand out. But it's difficult, isn't it, to, to do that? You know, one one game dropped in the middle of November. You know, when you've not really had a proper time to train and all that kind of thing. I think one thing that stood out from preseason and you know, watching all, all the comment, uh, the content, sorry, coming over from Austria and France. He seems like he's really settled into the club. He seems like he's a bit of a joker, a bit of a loud, you know, I think his hashtag's gone down well, hasn't it, on Instagram, Greek Scouser. Um, he seems like he, he's English. He's done an interview with the club site and seems like he's settled settled in that regard. So he'll be all the better for a, for a pre-season. And he's looked good as well in the games. I think that's another one. It's, it's one thing to be a joker in the dressing room and be a nice guy and whatever, but he's looked like he can play football. He can deliver a good cross. He can get into advanced areas up the pitch, which... It's something Liverpool lose in the past when when James Milner plays at left back, for example. You know, as good a player as he is, he's not a left footer. He's not doesn't give that natural balance. Simakas should, on paper, do that, and I, I think he might be in a, a much better place if he's uh, asked to, to play at Norwich and maybe even beyond. Yeah, so it, it takes me back to when uh, um, Robbo was kept out the team by Klopp and Mourinho. Was in, and then you know, Mourinho actually started playing decent, and then he got injured, and then Robbo took over from there. So, it, this is a you know, uh, cost us his chance, yeah, know, yeah, to prove himself. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I mean, I wish Robbo was out there, but you know, to have when Robbo gets back to have both of them, you know, uh, to kind of interchange will be really good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, he's a full international. You know, he's he's he's, he's he cost more than Andy Robertson when he signed. Yeah. So I mean, you know, he should be he should be a capable replacement. I think Liverpool fans, and I'm sure we'll talk about this as the, the show goes on, but they're always wanting two players for every position, and sometimes more for for each position. And you know, you would say that left back should be one of the areas where, as much as Robertson is an important player, Liverpool have gone and bought someone who should be able to fill in. And the chance, you know, it's it's up to the player, isn't it? It's up to it's up to Simicas to show it and. Yeah, I think probably not the worst game for him if he was to come in for one game in right. Norwich away. I think, you know, Norwich play a bit of football. I don't think they're going to be sort of... It's not Burnley away, is it, where they're going to sort of be hitting diagonals out to his flank and that kind of thing. So I think um, I, I'd be I'd be quite confident if Liverpool had to start with, with Simicass on on, um, on Saturday. Not that I would mm-hmm. want Andy Robertson to spend any time whatsoever on the sidelines. You know, Neil, one of the, the main differences going into this season, the last season, is that their fans will be in the stadium so, kind of just give us your thoughts about yesterday and how it felt to, yeah. to see all the people there at Anfield. Yeah, well, 
if, I mean, first things to say is obviously it was nice that he did get in in the end after the right. debacle with the um, with the ticketing system, and that didn't go down well. And I'm sure there'll be there'll be a lot of people setting off a bit earlier tonight just to make sure that you know whatever chaos awaits them when they get to the ground is is, is um, minimised. But um, to, to to go to the actual to once inside the stadium, let's just take it when, when people were in. It was great, you know, fantastic. I mean, I put some videos out on social media which have been lapped up by by people, you know, of just Allison coming out to warm up and a little bit of um of the teams coming out for, before the game and Van Dyke getting an elevation. And it was, I mean, it's just it's what football is. And I I mean, I I don't I admit I actually wrote a piece about this after the Euros. I lost I lost so much in my enjoyment of anything to do with football. I, I didn't want to know about football, to be honest. And that wasn't just about Liverpool being poor and injuries and whatever else. It was a soulless experience. It was an empty experience going to the game. You know, I can go and watch, I can go and watch games on the, I've got a field close to my house. I can go and watch games on there if I want to, you know, just, just watch pure <laughs> sort of football. I, you want, you want the, the involvement, the mm-hmm. drama, the, the immersion of it. And that was back a little bit, obviously, on the last game of the season with Crystal Palace, and you could feel the difference then with mm-hmm. what nine and a half thousand inside times that by four um yesterday, and hopefully again tonight. Um makes a huge difference, and it'll make a difference to Liverpool on the road mm-hmm. as well. Because mm-hmm. I think I think Liverpool suffered in that regards as well last season. I think Liverpool's away end is always brilliant, obviously, but I think they they relished the, the idea of you know. Being a, having the fans against them and sort of puffing the chest out and going at that, so I don't think it's any coincidence that clubs like Liverpool, Celtic, be another one I would I would throw in there. You look at how poorly they did last season without their fans. I don't think it's any coincidence that clubs like that really struggled. And and um, hopefully, from a Liverpool perspective, having the fans back through the door, starting starting yesterday and starting at Norwich on Saturday, will uh, will do them good. It, it was absolutely great to hear. Um... You'll never walk alone, sung by the fans, you know, and I loved how George faded out, you know, yeah. the, the song and everybody just, uh, you know, got together and started singing it. I've, mi- I've missed that. I- yeah. I'm sure every Liverpool fan has missed it as well. You look at it, you, you look at, I mean, Simakas is a good example, isn't he? I mean, this will be the first time he's he's played with any fans. Uh, you know, in, in Liverpool, Thiago had obviously the last game of the season. Um, Jota's had a couple of little... Little ones, I think he probably had was it Wolves, and um, he would have probably have had Palace. I think he came off the bench in the last game of the season. So these players haven't experienced that. Yeah, even the young players. You, you saw Harvey Elliott yesterday, for example, and look, you know, look how delighted he was to be on the pitch. I mean, it looked like he was looked like it was his testimonial, didn't it? The way he was yeah. leaving the pitch at the end, and you know, I think that it does mean a lot. And I think you know, we talk about Liverpool suffering without fans. You think about the players as well, just individual players. All of a sudden, Mane looks a bit sharper, looks a little mm-hmm. bit more sort of up for the game, and you know, like he's got a bit of his physicality back. You imagine Bobby Firmino will be absolutely made up to hear his song belt now. You think about Van Dyke coming back after ten months out. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm sure there'll be a lot of applause for Joe Gomez mm-hmm. and the new lad Canate tonight. So mm-hmm. these players will really benefit from that, I think. And you know, I know all, I know all clubs should, and uh, you know, I'm not saying Liverpool are unique in this regard, but I think from up front. We're analysing Liverpool on this podcast. Mm-hmm. I have to say that they they should have an extra, however many percent mm-hmm. from from just having that atmosphere back in their stadium. You know, we let's uh, just kind of wind the clock back. You know, uh, obviously Liverpool finished in third place last last season. Um, most pundits said, you know, they didn't even think they'd get into the top four, right? So, yeah. winning the last twenty eight points out of thirty, how does that? help this team going into this season, you know, what kind of confidence do you think it, it brings to everybody now that Van Dyke is back, you know, Mane, as you said, looks so much physically fit and mentally ready for the season. Yeah. Your thoughts about I, that? Yeah. Well, I think, I think what it shows is that they can get through tough times mm-hmm. and, and they don't come much tougher than last season. If you right. think, the whole package of it, you know, like I say, empty stadiums. They just won the Premier League and not really had the chance to really sort of celebrate it the way they would have liked. I know, it was, I know they did a pretty good job in the circumstances, but they, you know, they haven't had a full stadium since they won the Premier League, and you know, everything's changed since then. Then you had the, the injury problems that started before the season. You know, mm-hmm. you think about people talking about Van Dijk and talk about Gomez, and rightly so. But you think Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain was out for three months before the season started. I think Trent was out for. Most of pre-season, Thiago got played the game and then got COVID and missed the game. I think Mane missed the game. There was all these problems going on and on. 
before the season had even started. And then once you, you sort of got into the, certainly once you got past Christmas, I think you could see that everything just caught up. And I think it, what Liverpool will take from that is that it got that bad and it got that low and this incredible six home defeats after so long without a home defeat, this incredible period where it felt like there would be a centre-back falling down injured pretty much every day. It didn't matter who it was or what, what the circumstance was. And yet Liverpool still finished above the European champions. They still finished above Leicester. who had all these, you know, as much as I, I sort of, I really like Leicester, but they had so much, so many plaudits last season, Leicester. What a, what a job Brendan Rodgers has done. What a job Thomas Tuchel's done since he took over at Chelsea. Liverpool finished above them. What a job. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's got Manchester United firing again. If the season had been two weeks longer, I think Liverpool would have finished above United as well. So, you, you know, you, you look at that and you think, we came through that. It can't be that bad again. <laughs> fingers crossed <laughs> obviously it can't be that bad again and it could be really good you know when you've got these new guys coming in you've got obviously all of a sudden there's five pretty good options at centre back now maybe maybe more all of a sudden there's there's you know the front three maybe reinvigorated certainly certainly Mane and Salah full pre-season you've got Jota looking sharp as attack all of a sudden you've got a couple of younger lads who are, who are ready to maybe make another step forward and yeah it, it could it could be a really positive season I mean you know it can all it can all evaporate in the space of a week or two, but mm-hmm. I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't have any reason not to be optimistic about Liverpool this season. I think that, I think you know, they showed last season that no matter what, they'll still be competitive. I thought it was like funny last season, um, you know, because quite a number of pundits were, were going. I don't understand why Liverpool, uh, you know, <laughs> play yeah. this way, and then Maguire for United gets injured, and then it's it's all about yeah. you know. United have crashed because of Aguirre. There was nothing yeah. about Liverpool. And and I quite like that, actually, because, you know, pe- people are always going, we got lucky getting third. There was no luck about that. It, 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 half, half the players were missing, you know. Yeah. Um, I thought they all pulled together, uh, you know, the last few games of the season and got over the line. And I think other teams need to be worried. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, you look at you sort of when people say they got lucky at the back end of the season, they didn't. I mean, they didn't play. I wouldn't say they played amazingly well, you know, to, mm-hmm. to, to get there, but they did what they had to do. And really, they did what they did for a large period of the title winning season. They 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 won games through mm-hmm. enough, having enough quality in the game and, and being, you know, having enough character and, and, and sort of spirit to, to stay in games when they were having mm-hmm. a bad spell and then, and then use their quality to win it. But I think what would I what I would say is where you saw a little bit of Liverpool flexing the muscles. I thought that that sort of, those two away games, with Manchester United and then Burnley. So you look at the two different challenges there and Liverpool really played played a lot of real good football against Manchester United when we opened up and you could see that that was probably the first time, I would probably say the first time ever, United under Klopp have really come and thought, yeah, come on, we'll have a go at these, these a week. And Liverpool went, okay, lovely, there we go, we'll do that. And then you look at, Obviously, they had the West Brom game in between. And you go to Burnley and you think, oh, it's a tough one, Wednesday night or Tuesday night, whenever it was. You think, oh, God, this is going to be a tough one. And they played they just they played a, a completely different game, but won the game pretty comfortably. And you think, oh, that's Liverpool sort of going through their, their gears again and sort of finding, all right, we can win a game that way, but we can also win it that way. Whereas probably February, March, they were looking like they'd forgotten they'd forgotten it all all of that or they'd lost lost their way and all of that they, they they weren't even able to sort of you know keep a clean sheet at home or or do, do things like that so i think that would be an ominous sign and that was bear in mind that was done the united game was done with Nat and Reese center back it was done with you know um i think Sadio didn't play that game i think he was on the bench um jordan henderson was out injured so there's there's a lot of a lot of parts to add into that and it wasn't too bad at the end of the season either. You know, Neil, do you uh, want to switch the tactics a little bit with uh, Kanate coming on and, you know, hopefully Ben Dyke being healthy and you have a seemingly healthy math tip right now and Gomez yes. is, is there. Do you see that Klopp would deviate any way from his uh, traditional 4-3-3, maybe doing a three in the back every once in a while and have wingers or no? No, I don't know. I don't just because he's never. I mean, I think I think back. I think he's done it twice. I can I can remember him doing it in, mm-hmm. in his Liverpool time. I think and, and certainly one time he he changed it all at half time. I think he did it at Stoke in in his first full season, mm-hmm. um, the game where Firmino scored the winner and and you know 
big one in the top four mm-hmm. race. But the other one was, was Brighton, I think, when when Emery Chan and, and when Alden both played in the back three. And that was yeah. that was sort of we, we thought we'd never <laughs> keep the likes of that again, didn't we? We thought, you know, oh, how can you get so many centre back injuries? But um I don't I just don't see him doing it. And he's not the type that does that without clear signposts and sort of, you know, uh, trying it out an awful lot in training. You know, he, he's big on training time. Right. He's big on togetherness and, and automations and the movements and that kind of thing. So I think we'd have seen it in pre-season if he was, if he was considering, and he's had, he's had most of them players available, yeah. you know, uh, and that Phillips and Reese and whoever else, Billy Cometio. So he's had the, the chance to do it. Um, but I don't see him. I don't see him doing it as much as it might liberate Robertson, Alexander, and it might help out the front three. Mm-hmm. I think maybe he likes that security of three in the midfield. Um, mm-hmm. He likes that Fabinho plus plus two plus two eights. So I don't don't see him moving too far away from that. I think maybe the question might be more so: would he would he think about the front four mm-hmm. all playing together, or a front four all playing and playing a, a, a sort of Firmino in a ten, or or Jota in a ten, or Salah, you know? In, in that that sort of system, I think that's more likely than a than a, a defensive change in formation. Mm-hmm. You know, you mentioned Fabino plus two eights. As we've seen this preseason, Keita has really has shown some uh, some proper form. You know, and he's he's one of those that is so exciting, and you always think, what if he can stay healthy, right? So, but yeah. then, so who are the the two? You know, you, you're thinking, uh, and there's a Henderson, and there's a Keita, there's a Thiago. You know, maybe an ox. So there are options there in that midfield too. Yeah, Harvey Elliott as well. That's not. That's yeah, of not course. Yeah. Him, you know, given what he's what he's done preseason, and Curtis Jones still mm-hmm. had a real, real good goal last season. So a lot of options. I mean, I, I sort of do share the, the concerns the fans have about midfield, but when you read them out like that, and, mm-hmm. and you just let's just say they were all available for eighty mm-hmm. percent of the season, even it's a tough decision, isn't it? It's a tough, right. tough midfield to pick. You know, considering most people would love to add a Sal Niguez or a Yuri mm-hmm. Tillemans or Renato Sanchez, whoever it may be, the people are calling for them as well. Right. You'd have you'd have a headache then. But um, I think I think the ideal midfield was the one we saw once last season at Everton when Van Dijk got injured. It was mm-hmm. Fabinho with Thiago to the left of him and and Henderson to the right. Mm-hmm. And I think that does mm-hmm. to me that looks like it's got a perfect blend if everyone's fit and firing. You know, it's got Henderson to do the covering for for um, Trent on the right hand side, which mm-hmm. you've seen work really well. You've got Fabinho obviously doing all the Fabinho things in the middle, and then you've got that extra sort of tempo and creativity of Thiago. And I think that was a big positive from the back end of the season. And hopefully, that rhythm isn't lost by by his injury that he's had post Euros. But I think he looked really good towards the back end. I think particularly West Brom, Burnley, um, outstanding performances. Mm-hmm. Manchester United throw in there as well. But I think. Cater, Cater's the sort of joker, isn't he, in the park? And it's it's hard to just not have the same conversation about him all the time. It's a bit like Daniel Sturridge. When Daniel Sturridge sort of was at Liverpool and there was so many, you know, Klopp, I think Klopp, one of the first things he said was, I think Sturridge was injured when Klopp arrived. And he said, oh, you see him for five minutes in training and you just want to play him. You just want to put him in the side. And Cater's like that. You see him in a preseason game, you think, oh, Naby, come on, you're going to be the man. But you can't commit to it, and by the, you know, by the end with Sturridge, you couldn't you couldn't commit to 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 to, to being in love with Daniel Sturridge because he was going to break your heart. He was going to get injured again, and I think this, it's getting to that stage with Cater a little bit that even even the positivity is sort of tinged with that feeling of come on, let's just see if he can do it for five games, even six games. He's never he's played five games for Liverpool once in a in a row in his career, and that was in his first season. He's never even had four in a row since then. And that was so that was February 2018. Um February 2019. Sorry. So that tells you about where Liverpool are at in terms of banking on him. Same goes for Oxley Chamberlain in, in many respects, but I think Kate is a better, a better midfield player than him. But the one thing you can say is he's got an incredible ability. He's got different skill sets to all of those other midfielders. He's got different skill sets to Genie Wanaldum, who's obviously mm-hmm. there. He can dribble with the ball, he can he can play passes which are into space, which I think mm-hmm. a lot of Liverpool players maybe don't do. A little mm-hmm. Liverpool very, very combination into feet. Cater's one who can play through balls, you know, in be, in between defenders and fullbacks and really open the game up. And if he's fit and if he's available for more of the season than he isn't, then Liverpool will be in good shape. But it's a big if, unfortunately. And I just 
yeah, I just hope he can get a bit of luck. There's a few players like that who, who need mm-hmm. a bit of luck. You know, I think, you know, you I think Ox is Ox certainly in that position. Mm-hmm. Joe Gomez is in that position, you know, with, with just come on, let's have an injury free season. Joel Matip's in that position. So mm-hmm. Kate is definitely in there. I think it's a make or break season for both of those players, Ox and Kaita. You know, either stay fit, uh, you know, on progress, or I think they'll, they'll be gone next summer. Yeah. Two years left on the deal, both of them, you know. So <laughs> you're thinking about Liverpool doing a lot of renewals at the moment, contract wise, with big players. But you look at the Trent, Fabinho, Allison, Van Dijk, Salah, probably Henderson, will, oh, I think, will get in there. Robertson will probably get offered something. They're players that Liverpool can bank on. How do you justify giving Naby a, a, a significant pay rise at this moment in time? I think you've got to wait and see whether he can play some games. Um, the signs from pre-season are good enough. He's been in pretty much every training session, every game. So hopefully that can continue into the campaign. You know, he did something yesterday. He received the ball uh, in our in our defensive third and spun his defender and then yeah. released Salah, you know, all in one motion. I'm like, man, that's that's... It just makes you have goosebumps. And I mean, please be healthy for a long period of time this season. We'd love to see that on the pitch. Most definitely. Pretty sad when, when you're just like, <laughs> please, please don't get injured. Because <laughs> I'd like to see, you know, uh, before Ox got that big injury when, when we played City, he was on fire. Yeah. And I'd like to see, see him get, get that back because um, he is a good player. Uh, again, you know, they're injury prone, then we got to move on from him. Um, I'd like to talk about Genie. Uh, obviously, we're gonna. Are we gonna miss him? Really? Because I think, just my perspective on things is, he only played that many games because we had the amount of injuries we had, you know. And I don't think we need to bring in a Genie-esque player because we've already got yeah. them. Yeah, no, well, I, I agree with it to an extent. I mean, trying a genie-esque player, yeah, I agree that maybe there isn't a great need for someone who does exactly what Genie went out and does. But I think the, the issue is signing a player you can depend on for the midfield, I think, does make sense. And, you know, I feel like you, you're you're doing it there a little bit, but I think a lot of people do damn Genie with fame praise and it's sort of reluctant praise. It's sort of like, yeah, Genie, you know, he's done a great job for us, you know. He's a great footballer, Genie Wijnaldum, like a great footballer. You know, not many players can play centre-back, centre-forward, centre-midfield, left side, right side, hold the midfield and do it at a pretty good standard. And he, he, he generally did. And I know he got a lot of criticism at the back end of last season. I know some of that got through to him on social media and he didn't seem to be too happy with it. But I think generally Genie, Genie Wijnaldum played really, really well for Liverpool for five years and generally played around 50 games a season. And I think that is pretty pretty special for the midfielder in the Premier League and in the Champions League so I do think while Liverpool do have players who can maybe do what he does if they're fit or can do more than what he does when they're fit in terms of attack and output do Liverpool have anyone who can step into that void and play 50 games this season let, you know, let, let's just I know I said it can't get as bad but let's just assume it does get as bad what, where would Liverpool have been last season if they didn't have Genie Wijnaldum? You know, where, it, let's let's say they were playing Curtis Jones, James Milner, and I don't even know who else was fit at that point. You know, in, in midfield at that point, their their season would have looked an awful lot different without without having that glue there to to hold it together. So I think they will miss him. Obviously, part of the captaincy group as well. So I'd be interested to see whether they promote someone. You know, I wonder whether Trent might get that that gig or. Maybe Mo might get it if that's part of his contract negotiations, gets into that that cartel. But um, I think Liverpool will miss him. But yeah, I do agree that maybe they don't need to just go out and find a clone for him. But they do, in my opinion, need someone, whether it's from within or from outside, to say, well, not to say, to stay fit and to play, you know, 90, 85, 90% of the games. You know, one of the players you, you've mentioned uh, a couple of times, uh, Jones, you know, last season he, he really stepped up. He, he had many man of the match performances where yeah. he was our best uh, player, not just in the midfield, but overall. And um, I remember a few games where he was taken off of the off the pitch and then we gave up goals right away. Yeah. And, you know, and so I'd like to see him have more of a role this year. But, you know, with people coming back from injuries, what do you think his prospects for getting regular game time are going to be? 
Yeah, I think it's an interesting one, Curtis. I mean, I listened to LSC TV on the uh, the Bologna game, and I think Jason mm-hmm. McAfee was sort of saying, you know, I'd be worried if I was Curtis Jones because Harvey Elliott sort of mm-hmm. moved out the way. And I sort of rolled my eyes a little bit because it was it was two hour long games, so it wasn't like one was getting more minutes than the other. And I think actually Harvey might have even come off in, in his game, but you can sort of see it. You know, he does. It does feel a little bit like Harvey Elliott's been put into the the A team, if you like, mm-hmm. in, in in these friendlies and Curtis has, has has been, you know, maybe a bit a bit more to prove. And that there might be a reason behind that. There might be a just a, a style wise thing. Mm-hmm. There might be a left sided thing, or you know, it could be anything. So I don't I don't think we should assume anything. Mm-hmm. Uh, I I completely agree with you. You know, I thought there was a spell last season, probably from November to, to February, where I think mm-hmm. Curtis was one of Liverpool's best players, and mm-hmm. you know, consistently as well. Uh, you think he scored. Big goal against Ajax. It was a big one away at Sheffield United to break open a game, wasn't it? And you know, we played played a lot of lot of minutes. And like you say, the, I think the two games were Leicester and Man City, where he went off and everything unraveled mm-hmm. pretty much before he'd even sat down. And I'm interested to see it. I think you, to go to the Wayne Alden point and to feed that in, I think he's got the capability of being a bit genie when Alden in terms mm-hmm. of you know, keeps the ball pretty simple. He, you know, he he's strong and he can protect it. He can drift out wide and, and, and fill spaces. I think maybe there's been a bit of, I don't know if it's unfair or whether it's just sort of, it's welcome to, to Premier League football, but people sort of say, oh, he needs to do a bit more, you know, because we sort of, we were used to this, this young prodigy coming through the, the academy and playing left side and scoring 30 yards. And obviously, you know, he, he didn't do himself any favours with that and, you know, scoring against Everton in that regard, the way he did he in his, you know, his first goal. But, I think he, I think it's really in, I think it's really exciting to see a player like that who's we know he's got that we know he can do all those things but he can also do the the teamwork and I I actually messaged someone from Liverpool yesterday just someone someone on the staff and about Harvey and I think the same applies to Kate. he said it's very difficult to do two things at once and he said it's to stand out but to fit in and he said that you know and he manages to do both of them Harvey Elliott and I think Curtis is capable of doing that as well he's still only twenty you know he's still. Mm-hmm. Two years younger than Mason Mount, you know, mm-hmm. only two years ago, Mason Mount wasn't really, you know, he played in the Championship. Curtis mm-hmm. has played fifty odd games now in, in in the top flight, or you know, for the top flight club. So I think there's a lot more to come from him. And maybe, you know, maybe this preseason is just a little bit of a, a nudge and a reminder to him that uh, you know you're still going to have to keep developing. You haven't just made it yet. You know, come on, you've still got more to come from you. But I think I think the ceiling's very high with Curtis Jones, and I think he'll be a very very good player for Liverpool for many years to come. As will Harvey Elliott. I think he, some people forget like how old he actually is. You know, yeah. um, they're, they're young lads, um, and Harvey Elliott. Well, what a what a player! I mean, yeah. that, that lad's going to be a superstar. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you look at that generation of England players around that sort of 2002, 2003 generation. You've got Bellingham, you've got Saka, you've got Mason Greenwood, all, all those sort of guys, Phil Foden, and. He, You've got to throw Harvey Elliott into that mix. I, mean, I, think, I think he can be, you know, anywhere, anywhere you need him to be. Really, I mean, I think very impressive this this summer is that he's done it in a, in a midfield role. He's obviously, played wide right a lot um, for Blackburn. He's played played around the round the, the forward line, doing it midfield as well as. Yeah, that I think that did him a world of good going to Blackburn and the Championship. You know, uh, Championships a bit. Like tougher, uh, yeah. and uh, yeah, I think he did really well. Yeah, I think Klopp's defo gonna, you know, give him a chance this this season. I mean, there was talk about maybe him going out on loan, but you, you don't want to loan Harvey out again. No, no, I don't think so. I mean, you think where where are you gonna pitch Harvey? <laughs> Premier League club. Why would you give him to a Premier League club? He might not start every game, and if he does, he might just make another Premier League club better. You know, Liverpool, let's not forget, mm-hmm. Liverpool were, were, were competing with someone like West Ham last season at one stage. So you could give Harvey Elliott yeah, to, to someone, Southampton, and all of a sudden they're, they're, up, they're up the top end of the Premier League. So I don't see that. The championship's probably too low for him. Um, mm-hmm. And I think as well, the fact that he can play two or three positions means that you probably should get some opportunities anyway, whether it's off the bench, whether it's in cup games, whether it's starting the odd home game here and there. And then, you know, once he's in the side, I think I think once he does settle and start playing games, I think he'll be hard to shift. You know, one of the interesting things on, um, not just about him being a young player this preseason, is um, some of the other young lads that have been able to get a run out during these games. 
if you listen to a lot of the supporters online, you know, and how they would want the, the club to uh, be managed, we would never have a Trent Valley coming out of our home through our academy and playing and regularly, becoming the best right back in the world, right? So, out of the other younger players that you've seen through the preseason, what what do you uh, what are your thoughts about those guys coming? Yeah, it's tough. You're right. You, you you're right. I mean, it's it's not um, it's not criticism of supporters in the way, but it, it it is funny because it's sort of like you know we, we could we could have the same conversation. So Kate has got to have more games. games. We've got to get Thiago back fit and playing, but and Dyke and Gomez have got to come in. But you've got to sign a new centre back. You've got to have a you've got to have two left back to play. But Robertson, you know. We don't want him to miss any games either. You know, got to get jotted into the side to so play all four of the forwards. So, well, and, and also, let's give these youngsters a, a go as well, rather than loaning them out. So, that kind of thing. So, it's so difficult, isn't it? And the manager's squad, and that's why, or what Liverpool have been pretty successful at in recent seasons. Um, you look at, I mean, I, 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 I tweeted about Liverpool sort of saying they weren't going to sign him back. And people say, oh, just sign him. Well, and do what with him you know like he, he, he literally you know he, he would be minimum fifth choice centre back and eight, six, you know get that you scarred by previous experiences you can't, have, you can't just have everyone um, in terms of the young players I think you've got to be excited by Kay Gordon what we've seen of him in pre-season 16 years of age 2004 makes me sick um, <laughs> you know, disgusting isn't it but real talent a bit Harvey Elliott style talent I think in terms of his first touch, really nice. Seems to seems to move with the ball really well. He seems to have a game connect and he can he can run with it. So gets into scoring positions as well. Look or looks like from preseason. So I think you've got to be excited by him. There's there's a few players there. I mean, I, I don't I don't think the Liverpool's first team, but I think I think there'll be a lone move for Leighton Martin. And I think that'll be quite exciting for, for him because I think he's a talented player at a decent level, maybe Championship, Premier League. Maybe that, maybe that, and I think he'll get one this summer. Owen Beck did well in the game on on Sunday. looked looked like a, you know, a young lad, obviously, but looked like he had something that would fit at Liverpool if he can develop at a decent rate. And I know they think quite highly of Connor Bradley on the other side. So, you know, think of Tyler Morton nearly put one in the top corner, cop end on his, um, you know, his, his senior senior Anfield game. So there's plenty there. You know, it's it's tough, but. Gordon's the one that stands out. Yeah. Elliot, I think he's he's the one um, that I think he'll be playing in the twenty threes. He's got fifteen, which tells you everything about about how highly he's rated. Gordon, he played for Derby's first team in the championship, so I think he's got a bright future if he can carry on developing. That's another thing. What I love about Klopp, he you know he he lets these young youngsters come on pre season to to see how the first team play. He gives them chances. Uh, all you have to do really is just look at like City. Uh, you know, Pep spends millions upon millions, and the only one that's really come through is Foden. He just doesn't give you know these academy kids a chance, while Klopp does. Yeah, I mean, I'm a little bit down to ne- ne- never mind the money of the City have and yeah. the ability they have to spend, but also the, the specific way that the older players potentially might be just a bit. Be a bit hard for anyone to learn, never mind the old Whereas I think Klopp system is is tough and it's it's specific, but I think it's based around some some pretty transferable skills. I.e., can you can you listen? Can you can you stay concentrated? Are you really fit? Can you run for ninety minutes? You know, can you, can you do, do and, can, and are you positioning good? So you know, I think it might be I would say easier, but I think it might be sort of more. Um, accessible for the player to, to, to have those skills and I think one thing that I spoke to a young player in the summer the camp in the summer and I said how are you you know how are you finding it he just said I'm knackered he said I'm tired he said just training sessions he said I just he said when we get some downtime and I'm just like lovely straight into bed you know and, uh, faster kip and I think that's probably the eye opener for them I think that I think that's why he takes them on the tour not just to, to fill the squad and to play games but I think it's to sort of say look that's the that's the standard. That's the level you need to be at. You know, if you're not up for it, that's fine. You know, you can go and play, you can go and play for for Barnsley or whoever on, when you're 21. But if you are up for it, then let's see. Yeah, let's let's see you really throw yourself in. And I think more often than not, those Liverpool players do. And you know, you look at 
you look at more <laughs> back, uh, Jake Kane finished on the pitch, East Williams, you know, things like that. Ben, ben was on the pitch. Oh, um, obviously, Harvey. There's a lot of them, I think, that really fancy getting stuck into it. You know, they might not all, but well, they won't all make it at Liverpool. But they won't. But, you know, if two of them go over the next few years, Liverpool will save an awful lot of money. What's your what's your uh, what's your take on Taki? Um, it, it's it, it's a tough one. I mean, you can tell he's got skills. You can. Um, is he a little lightweight? I think so. Um, like a bit of a pushover. But you think Klopp will give him the chance this season? I think he'll be in the squad. Um, it's a tough one. I think Minamino probably in a different way, but similarly to Shakiri. Would benefit from a different system. Liverpool <laughs> play the sort of a number ten, for example. I think I think both Shakiri and Minamino yeah, yeah. will benefit whether playing as the ten or playing off the right. right. Um, mm-hmm. He's he has got something about him, Minamino. I think I think he's, <laughs> he he does have a lot of Firmino ish things about his game without the physicality of Firmino. Yeah. So Firmino, one of Firmino's great his strength, strength is, is his strength, and he uh, you can you can. He can put a ball up. He's not massive for you Firmino know, and he's not up tight and quick, but he can hold a ball up. And when he doesn't hold the ball up, that's when Liverpool tend to, to struggle, to be perfectly honest. But Minamino doesn't really have that. He, he's got the he's got the little fix around the corner and he's got the sort of, you know, the, the drifting into areas and arriving late into the box to finish what chances off, like we saw with, um, it was the Hertha game, wasn't it, when he, he finished that back heel. Yeah. And I think... The, the key for Liverpool is maybe committing to a to a position with him or just accepting that he's a 20 minute player and mm-hmm. be ideal for him and that might not be you know, what he wants. But we haven't seen enough, I don't think, from him. And I don't think we saw enough on the lower so either to say, ah, oh, no, that's that's what you need to do with Taki Minamino. You know, you know, I think I think generally he's been a he's just been a six out of ten, five or five, six out of ten, which isn't enough to get him in the Liverpool side. I think he'll stay around the squad just because I think it'll be yeah. difficult to, to offload him without sort of feeling like you're getting a bum deal. Um, so I would expect him to stay around. And probably the fact that he can, he can play, play maybe two three different positions in that line yeah. would benefit him as being a, a sub. But yeah, there's... I, I, know, I know a lot of people were very excited like, when he was... Uh, you know, I, I thought he played well for Salisbury against Liverpool. But, you know, if you're being honest... He's probably looked like a player that you'd sign for seven point two five million from Salzburg, and that, that's the way I, that's the way I would put it. He's looked like what he what he was. You know, it was interesting last year when we beat Crystal Palace seven two, and he scored and he had a he had a phenomenal game. And the next ten games, he probably played like seven minutes. You know, and you're wondering like, and are we didn't get any results? And you're like thinking, okay, why can't he get back into the game? When we're, we're not performing, so yeah, he's he's very enigmatic with this team. And you just don't know where he could fit in, yeah. Um, and without playing regularly, you know, the other players aren't going to have confidence in what you're doing. Yeah, that's that's the challenge, isn't it? With the squad player, you know, it's it's getting them getting them up to up to speed without them playing every game, and it's so difficult. I think Origi suffered really badly from that over the last couple of seasons where, you know, I think there was a there was a spell probably probably in, in mind more so that he, he was comfortable with that idea that, you know, I'm going to come up for 10 minutes and I'm going to have to influence the game. But I think the longer that goes on and the longer you're training and you're working and then all of a sudden the team's maybe evolving and the new players are coming in or, or the expectation of the team's going up or whatever it is and all of a sudden you're Maybe you're changing the way you're playing, and it's a little bit tighter. Yeah. And that's going to be to keep coming on and keep delivering when he's getting ten minutes, and then you're playing him in a cup game and getting he's getting seventy minutes when he's got to be right back and whoever else playing in the side. You think, you know, give me a chance, yeah. and then as we see last season, I mean, the last time he really got a chance, Burnley wasn't it? Yeah. He missed that. He missed that. Yeah. Whole thing, which, uh, cost Liverpool obviously on the day. So I think it, it is difficult. That's that's the that's what Klopp's done so well, really. If you look at the time at Liverpool, that the players who were out in the cold or whatever, yeah, would, maybe would be frozen out. I've been brought back into the um, Obviously, Minamino did a little bit last season, but you've seen I'm sorry, like Mil, another one maybe who's done that. Uh, Ox. So that's the next challenge going forward. I think is what can you get yeah. out of these? so-called squad players. 
Um, what's your uh, what's your eleven for for Saturday? Um, so we shoot. Should we assume Robbo's not fit? Should we, should we, should we, should we, should we take Robbo out? Just, yeah. just let's assume he's a major doubt at the very least. So we'll go with Allison, obviously. Oh, Simakas would play at left back. I think it has to, have to, have to yeah. Milner, but it'll have to be Simakas. Um, Matip will play. I think he'll play with Van Dijk. I think that was the that was the, the mark last night. Was Van Dijk going through seventy minutes yeah. playing against Norwich? Um, he'll play Fabinho. I think he'll play in midfield as the holder. I think he'll get a good good run tonight. Maybe 60, 70 minutes tonight. Yeah. I think he'll go. Then I think it'll be mm-hmm. Naby and Milner. That would be my my pick for the midfield. Or no, 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 no. my pick. But it would be what I think will be picked. And then the, and then the front would be Jota, Salah, and Mane. That would be fine. so. You'd have a bench with maybe Firmino, Elliot, Curtis, Canate, uh, Henderson, Thiago. Not bad. Yeah, it's not a bad bench, is it? <laughs> That's the thing, too. You know, uh, everybody won't starts looking at City and Chelsea and United who they've signed and you know a lot of fans are just like get get your get your money out FSG but when you when you sounded out, out like that Neil the the bench the bench yeah. is pretty damn good yeah well you think I'll just list I mean Ox didn't mention Snap Phillips um you know Nico obviously yeah yeah, you've got, you know, um, Origi, Shiri, Minamino, we didn't even talk about that. You know, you could be you could be leaving four or five pretty good players out of the squad, even never mind the side, Joe Gomez, you didn't mention there. Um, so, there's uh, yeah, there's a lot of lot of options. The only problem is, is just making sure that there's a lot of options in November and February as well, not just in August. I think like um, a, a lot of people also, you know, about the ages of quite a few of our players. I don't see a problem with it. I mean, they're, they're at their prime. I mean, Virgil, Salah, you know, Hendo, all at their prime. So I, I don't have a problem with them being 30, 31, um, I, as a lot of other people do. I, I don't quite understand it. Yeah, well, I mean, I suppose it's just it's the worrying, the worrying nature of fans. They are worriers, aren't they? Generally, I think a lot of a lot of supporters they fear the worst. So they, you know, they they, they mortified the Liverpool were selling all those players this summer to replace them with twenty five year old versions of of the same player, no matter whether the players go on to be better or not. So yeah, it is difficult. I suppose the issue is more for the club in terms of the contracts and how much how much recompense they give and how much many years. But you're right, like I mean. Salah in particular, I mean, Salah doesn't, his output doesn't seem to be going in any wrong direction. Mane, I think Mane will be fine this season. I think, you know, he had a bit of a dip last season, but I think he'll be fine. Van Dijk's got plenty of miles left on his leg. And Henderson has as well. Um, who else is it? Matip. Matip's just 10 there. Maybe you could say there's a, there's a, a, a danger there that, you know, he'll have a lot of, a lot of uh, or not much tread left on the line. Other than that, I don't think there's too much cause concern, and if it is, it's down the road. Yeah, it, it, it's funny because you know you, you look at Fabinho, and he, he looks like he's thirty, but he's only twenty-seven. <laughs> so it's just yeah. one of those. Yeah, I, I just don't have a problem with it. I mean, like you say, Salah just keeps scoring goals. I mean, can you imagine the chances he had last season? If he would have put those away, it would have been, you know, 40, 40 prem prem goals. Yeah, well, yeah. you think about, you think about that when he scored forty four and all, all comps. I think I think if you look back on that, I think a lot of people would say he missed a few that season. You know, he could, could have had fifty, sixty. No, if if he if he, if he, he won, I don't think he take penalties that season for Liverpool. So you know, you look at that, he's staggering his output. He's staggering. He hasn't scored in three seasons at all. I know he's been a bit. You can see it's playing on his mind a little bit. Isn't it? Desperate to score a game of team, but I love that about him. And I think it almost I almost think it bodes well for the new season. It almost feels like saving them up but for Norwich. And you know, we've seen we've seen Luis Suarez give Norwich a, a hard time down the years. It wouldn't surprise me at all if we had a hat trick for Salah on Saturday or you know, a couple of goals. Yeah, that'd be nice. <laughs> I'd be I'd be I'd be all right with that. Um, uh, Steve, you got any more? 
Yeah, well, Neil, so as we're winding down our uh, our um, our podcast, so let's let's just talk about our what our expectations and predictions are about the season. Where we're, where do you think we're going to end up being in and, and yeah. who else is going to be fighting? Is it just going to be the usual suspects up there? Yeah, I think there's only four teams. There's only four teams that can win the league this season. The, the, the top four from last season, and um, all should be a lot stronger as well. Well, sorry, three of them. Should be a lot I'm not sure about them personally in terms of whether they're getting stronger. But a lot of potentially going to lose. Well, they've lost Aguero, obviously from the squad. But they're potentially lose Bernardo Silva, maybe Gabriel Jesus. I wouldn't like to be letting yeah. them players leave my club. If I if I if, this, if they were Liverpool players leaving Liverpool, I think there'd be a lot of worried Liverpool fans. If if Bernardo Silva was leaving Liverpool, it's something like that. Um, I agree with you, Sam. I'm not 100% convinced. Jack Grealish is just needed at any any given point. Um, if you were signing, if you signed Kane, I, I would I would think that would probably well that would definitely make them a lot stronger. If you were signing someone like Holland or or even even maybe Sancho, if they decide to sign that, I maybe would have said. Okay, yeah, that's making a, a big, big, significant move. Um, I think Grealish is a little bit more of the same as what we, what we already had. United should be stronger. We've got really good attacking players, obviously. Doubts about the manager, but Varane will make a big difference, I would imagine, in their defence. Um, Chelsea should be stronger if they get Lukaku. That was what, probably what they were lacking last season, was a, was a goal scorer. So I think Chelsea have got a decent chance. But then look at Liverpool and you say, well, Liverpool are, Liverpool are the third best team in the league last season and they've added the best centre back back into the side, the captain, um and, and, and a couple of centre backs potentially to play there as well, as well as getting other players, you know, more out of them. I think Liverpool would be right up there. I think it would probably if you were asking me, I'd probably say Liverpool or City as the champions. Um mm. Chelsea ahead of United, but Chelsea close. Two. To the top three, so I think it'll be a lot closer. I don't think it'll be a 20 point gap or a 50 point gap. I think it'll be, I think, I think the, the top three will be within sort of eight or nine points. Um, and I think, yeah, I'd probably say we'll go with Liverpool as the champions because we're on the but we'll go with narrow Liverpool, City, Chelsea, United, and then after that, I don't care. Yeah, I, d- I don't think uh, any like City or Liverpool will run away with it. You know, like like before, I think it's going to be a really tight race this time around. I think that's the next challenge for Liverpool as well, because I did feel this and I did say this in, in the many people I spoke to. About that. I felt like the only way Liverpool could win that Premier League when they did was by that the way they did it was sort of by just blitzing the field. I think if that would have been a tight race again, I think Liverpool and City, I think City would have done it again because I just feel like the emotion emotion sort of at Liverpool I don't think it lends itself to, to that kind of real tight nip and tuck battle over the course of a season I think that, that breathing space to be able to say no we're going to be relentless or something. I think maybe the, the fact that they've, they've won one the fact that they've obviously had the everything that's happened in between I think they would be better equipped for a, a more nip and tuck title race this time around and I think that's what it'll be uh, who's, your, uh, who's your top scorer? Golden boots. I can't, I can't look past Salah. Um, mm-hmm. He's 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 won it twice, and he's been missed out on the last day twice. I think has he in, in in his four years and penalty taker. Going to play pretty much every game. He doesn't really get injured. You got to you got to look at Salah. I mean, Kane Kane if he goes to City will have chances, but Kane tends to miss a couple of months of the season a lot, and it does it does reflect well on him that he's he still managed to win Golden Boots by doing that. But I think he I think it'll be. I think it'll be Salah. Salah. Yeah, I, I, you know, Lukaku would have a good chance in there if he, if he goes straight into Chelsea. But yeah, I, I, I'm going to go with Mo. So, are we all Brentford fans this season? Or do we care? Um, yeah, yeah. I, I did a chat with their, um, the, the chairman last, last year, obviously the chairman of Midland as well. So, I did a chat with him before Liverpool played them. And interesting, interesting concept of Brentford and doing a lot of good things, obviously, both. I mean, you look at the Premier League, it's got an awful lot of players. Brentford, you know, John Egan and Ollie Watkins and Ben Rama and Neil Lopez. Um, I'm pretty sure Tony will be one. I trash him at the end of the season. I think he'll do have a good season, one to watch. So, yeah, I think 
I'd like to see I'd like to see a club like Brentford do well. I'm looking forward to going there as well. Yeah. The yeah. Yeah. Kind of thing. So it would be nice nice to have a newcomer to the Premier League and mm-hmm. not one that just has a, a flying visit. Right. What's what's your uh, what's your relegated teams? <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> I'm just trying to think you know, what came up in the Norwich. Um, I think Norwich might do okay. We've got a good manager, some good players. Um, I think Newcastle, I'd be worried if I was Newcastle. Definitely. I think I'd be worried if I was Burnley. Mm-hmm. Just think. Burnley, it reminds me a little bit of sort of, I don't, I don't, not style wise, but sort of so, a, li- a little bit in that sort of sense that you know, no one, you know, when people start stop talking about Burnley as a, 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 a relegation contender, is probably where the danger lies, and that's what happened with Stoke. That people started to think, "Oh, can we do a little bit more? Can we start pushing towards the top half?" And all of a sudden, the wheels come off. So, I see, I don't see they've signed anyone particularly impressive. Neither, neither those had those for Willock, but yeah, those two I'd be concerned with. I, I don't know what to expect from what I, I asked them. My fantasy team today and. They look like Watford have got 150 players. Uh, it felt like the whole every list of players. So I don't know who's going to play for them or what sort of system. But yeah, I think I think Newcastle, Burnley. I'm not convinced by what Crystal Palace will are doing either. I know they've signed some good players that people are getting a bit excited about. Patrick Vieira is a to the manager. So I think I think there's a few clubs that might be in a bit of danger. You know, I don't like to bring up the bitters on this podcast, but since Rafa is over there. You have any thoughts about what this season is going to look like this season? I don't think Rafa will be there by the end of the season. Right that way, um, I, I, I couldn't believe it. Honest, I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe nobody, an adult in the room, didn't sort of step forward on either side and say, "No, nah, this is not. This won't work." Um, and we, I think, that was the story from the weekend wasn't it that it was getting a bit of abuse from the crowd. They didn't have a great result. Obviously, I looked at the team. I thought, not a great side, but he's got obviously. Um, I know he's got some players to come back in. I wouldn't. I don't think there's a lot of optimism. Mm-hmm. Get to that way. I, I don't think mm-hmm. we're going into a new season, and I don't, don't think that's Rafa's fault. But it, it's the fact that Rafa's there. Really, I don't think that they're, they're going to play incredible football, and I don't see him getting the support that he needs from the, the crowd. I think you know the first the first sign of trouble. I think I think it'll be it'll be a problem for him at, at Everton, and you know. I don't. I don't wish it on him. I don't wish it on Everton as much as you know. You we, we joke about Liverpool Everton. I like to see a strong Everton, but I don't see it with Rafa in charge. I don't, I don't see them being anything more than they, they've been in recent seasons, and I think they might be even less. It's very brave of Rafa, to be honest. Uh, yeah, I couldn't believe it when when I heard the news. I was just like, wow, that's that's just weird. Just yeah. weird to me. And yeah, what what once they start, you know, have a few losses, they're gonna be on his back and, and it's not gonna end well. You just think I mean you just think about a derby. So I mean the first derby of the season, you've got Liverpool fans, let's say Liverpool are winning two 0 five minutes to go. Liverpool fans will be singing Rafa Benitez's name at Goodison Park. At, you know, and what do you do? You know, that, that's a, what do Everton do there? You know, it's it's not it's just not right. It isn't. It just doesn't fit. And I know. I know. There's. I've talked to plenty of Everton fans, and enough of them are saying, "Well, just give him a chance. You know, get behind him. He's here now. We have to give him a chance." But that's easy. That's easy to say when the season hasn't started. That's easy to say when you haven't you haven't seen Richarlison taken off, and you bring on a, a defensive midfielder at home when they're winning one 0 and they end up drawing one one. That's easy. You know, that that's that's a little bit what Rafa does. Rafa's, Rafa's a cautious manager. He's not someone who's going to get the place bumping because he's he's, he's playing four up front and Liverpool and Everton are winning five three. You know, it's going to be pretty much a grind. And if you don't like the man, anyway, the grind does doesn't feel as good. Even even when you win, so I think I think there's a lot a lot of problem. Well, not a lot of problems, but I think there's a big problem looming at Everton in terms of the manager and the fans. And I'm surprised they did what they did. I know they were caught on the hot by Ancelotti, with respect to obviously having for a manager. And I know there was a great deal of eye catching. I, I don't know. I, I'm amazed nobody sort of pushed harder and said, "No, come on, let's not do that," because I don't I don't see how it works out. Well, I just remember the the sticky guy at Chelsea when he went to Chelsea, yeah. you know, from their fans, and he, he won a trophy over there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And and I just remember being a Liverpool fan saying, "Hey, quit, quit giving him the stick," you know. But now when he's now he's at Everton and they start giving him the stick, I'm really going to be upset about that. 
<laughs> yeah, absolutely. But he had a, he had a good side at Chelsea, though. You know, I mean that's 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 a different thing, isn't it? You know, you go in halfway through the season at Chelsea, you've still got a, a Chelsea team. You know, you go in, you go in at Everton, replacing Ancelotti, who finished tenth last season, and you know, I think that's probably about where they where they belong. You know, I, I don't, I don't, I, don't, I, don't think, I know they've t- tailed off at the back end of the season, but I don't, don't, don't look at that Everton side and say, oh, that should be, that should be top six. <laughs> no, I, I don't see. I see seven sides that are clearly better than it already, and I think there's a few more that are probably getting better than it as well. I remember they won the league in October. Well, <laughs> they won their trophy when they put Van Dyke out for the season. So, you well, know, that- you're a shit club when that happens. Well, now they can wear the Florida Cup on the on the <laughs> on the shirt. Um, lastly, um, any I'm obviously not going to ask any transfer rumors. <laughs> um, what's this rumor about St George's on the twelfth? <laughs> no idea. No idea. Yeah, because I'm hearing St George's Hall. Yeah, I'm hearing like fireworks, uh, animation crew. Right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> So, no, no, I, I, I don't know. Yeah, couldn't tell you. Um, I think we can safely say it won't be a new sign. I don't, I don't, yeah. I think if Liverpool are going to be unveiling a new sign, I think George's Hall with animation crew and fireworks. Um, I don't think that would have leaked out, put it that way. Um, I don't think it'd be planned on that far in advance either. So, um, no, I haven't heard that rumor. Really. Um, sorry, can't help you with that one. No, no, it's fine. I just thought I, I, I would ask because uh, I've asked a few mates and they're. That, they think it's either the, you know, Salah doing a new uh, contract, but I'm like, well, why would they do all fireworks for him and, and nothing for anybody else? So, uh, yeah. yeah, that's just, you know, a little celebration for, for Liverpool for winning the league. Kit launch, potentially, I don't know. Um, you know, the, the, that, that, they, they're the things that you would you would hire out places for would be things like kit launch or an advert. That mm-hmm. kind of thing. Um, no, I haven't. I haven't heard anything about it. I'll, um, I'll maybe have a look into it. <laughs> <laughs> well, as always, Neil, we, we appreciate you coming on, and um, you know, hopefully, halfway through the season, you come back on, and we'll 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 see where Liverpool are. Yeah, hopefully, uh, hopefully, we're looking up the table on it. Hey? Yeah, I think we will. <laughs> Same. Well, cheers, mate. Appreciate it. Yeah, cheers, Neil. Thanks for coming, buddy.